Hello everyone, hope you're doing alright, hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping sane, hope you're enjoying the uh, the nice weather, um, hopefully it won't be long now until we can all go out and sit our mates and uh, enjoy it together, so looking forward to that, um, I might need a bit of a haircut before then, um, I'm embracing the Boris cut at the moment, but there is a, a risk that his hair will become more neat than mine in, uh, in due course, so yeah, definitely need to do something about that. Anyway, that aside, um, I want to talk today about uh, my biggest loss throughout my gambling addiction what i conceive or perceive to be my you know greatest loss during um during my gambling or my many many years of gambling my gambling career as us recovering addicts uh, often call it um possibly ironically seeing as the damage it can actually do to both your finances and also to your real career your actual career your actual job but uh, yeah i want to talk about the biggest loss i experienced during my gambling career um, now, the first thing I will address is that <clears throat> I've spoken in a previous video, actually, about the largest amount of money I've lost in a single session of gambling. Um, and as a lot of people who will have clicked on this video will want to know, you know, what was my biggest financial loss? What was the biggest hit I took um, during either a single session of gambling or a single period of gambling or a single day or whatever? So I will, I will tell you. Um, the first big loss I ever had was on online blackjack, funnily enough. Very first sort of dabble with online gambling. Um, I actually had a really, really good run on blackjack. Obviously, that led me to believe that I knew what I was doing, that I could somehow not cheat the game, but I was actually quite a good player. And I think I turned... Blimey, it was in dollars back then. That goes. That shows how far it was, uh, long it was ago. When you know all your your online betting accounts are all in dollars or euros. And I think I turned a hundred dollars into about three and a half thousand. Um, I then came home after a few beers and proceeded to lose that three and a half thousand in one evening. Um, annoyingly, that wasn't the biggest uh, biggest loss. Um, if we take the three and a half thousand as a loss rather than the hundred, that wasn't the biggest loss. I think the biggest loss inside a day was about eight thousand uh, pound that was me starting relatively modest stakes or what i thought was modest stakes for online slots i think a pound two pound um which towards the latter part of my my gambling career i would have actually considered quite high but i deemed these as the norm at the time um and then later going on and playing fob tees i think maybe in a bit of a gambling haze uh, we all have that I've uh, spoken about before, we all have that self-destruct button inside us where we've lost a, a decent amount of money, a, a large portion of money. Uh, we've probably lost more than we should have done. We've more, lost more than we can afford. We've done ourselves actual financial harm um, and we metaphorically hit this self-destruct button which kind of it makes your brain go, oh, fuck it, you know, I'm, just, I'm in for a penny, in for a pound. And you almost get to a point where it's a race to the bottom and this is what happened on that occasion i'd lost the money in my bank accounts i think i'd lost any money i borrowed probably increased my overdraft or something like that i can't remember it's a bit of a blur um but i still had quite a lot of cash uh, uh, available to me um so i thought well how can i keep gambling my brain was like how can i keep gambling okay how can i how basically how can i do myself more damage or that almost became the addiction itself was how can i damage myself more and that was to go and lose that cash in the bookies, which I then proceeded to do. So I think that was 8,000, 8, 10,000. I can't remember. It was a lot of bloody money. Um, but the point of this video is not that. Um, but I did want to let you know that because I didn't want my title of this video to be clickbait. Um, and people are interested in that sort of stuff. My biggest loss, um, and this is a bit of a cliche, but my biggest loss throughout my gambling career, uh, throughout my time as an addict, was time. And not just time, but experiences. And there's two reasons for this. I spent, firstly, a huge amount of time actually gambling. A huge amount of physical time gambling, um, be that being the bookies, be that sat on my own at home, online, where I'd refused other plans, you know, with people and actually doing things that maybe someone of my age, you know, this would have been sort of early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, you know, whatever, should have been doing spent an awful lot of actual time gambling when I could have been either doing something more enjoyable with both that time and money, something more social, building more friendships, building relationships, or something more practical, something more useful, you know, studying, building a business, basically doing anything 
um, working on my health, mental health, all the rest of it, you know, basically doing anything that would have improved my life. I didn't make improvements or substantial improvements in my life for over a decade because of gambling. These are things, these are skills, these are experiences, and these are, you know, things that people pick up in those years that I was spending gambling. Lessons people learning, life lessons, experiences that people were having when I was sitting there in front of a fob tea, in front of a computer screen, on a fruit machine, in a pub. So I was losing time in that respect, but I was also missing out on experiences. And whilst I say that sometimes I would reject social plans, I would reject the opportunity to go out and see people, or to travel places, or do whatever, because I'd, at least in my own mind, rather be gambling. That wasn't always the case. Sometimes in life, you, you do have plans that you either can't get out of or that you feel sort of obligated to do or you do maintain an element of a social relationship with people because you are aware that you don't want to end up with no friends so you go along with things I held down relationships I held down friendships throughout my gambling life but I certainly never got those experiences even if I was there physically mentally I wasn't I might have been on occasion out with friends and I've used this example in so many of my videos. But if we use the most basic of a social occasion, and that is going out for a few beers with your mates of an evening, after work, or a Friday, Saturday, whatever, and you go to the pub with your mates, or a few pubs with your mates. And, as I said before, I would have been that one. Every group of mates, if you have a large enough group of friends, every group has one. I was the guy that was not sat at the table with your beer, watching the football, having some banter, and being a cliche and a stereotype um i was the the guy in the corner on the fruit machine so i was there i was there on that night out i had the friends i had the situation i had the location but i wasn't getting the experience i was the same throughout most of my sort of late teens early 20s i would be in nightclubs and i wouldn't be there on the dance floor i mean to be fair i, I couldn't dance then and i certainly can't dance now but I wouldn't be there on the dance floor and I wouldn't be chatting up the girls and doing the things that us blokes should do, albeit quite often very badly during those years. I was on the fruit machine or something similar. I was, you know, I was distracted. I mentally wasn't there. So whilst physically, yeah, maybe I did go places. I went on holidays and I had bets riding on football back in the UK and I was distracted I was taken away from the situation I was in. So we think when we say we lose time, and as I say, that is definitely the, the biggest loss I ever had was time. We think we about the time we actually physically spend gambling. But even when we're not physically gambling, we're distanced. We find ourselves, you know, either contemplating gambling, in the midst of gambling, checking football scores, checking other results, you know, having something that you're waiting to get a result on, or post-gambling, where you're suffering from a loss, you're maybe reeling a little bit from a win, because that can desperately affect your mindset as well. Although you might think of that being a positive, it can actually have a, a sort of a weird negative effect on your mindset, and it certainly takes you out of the situation you're in, or in that sort of hazy middle ground where maybe you've had a long gambling session or although you're not waiting on a result or you've not had a particularly good or bad result you're mentally drained and you're mentally still in a gambling space so you're not able to interact on a normal social way or conduct uh, yourself in a normal way akin to sort of maintaining a healthy relationship either with a partner or with your friends or family or whatever so yes i spent chronologically speaking, a huge amount of the time during the worst years of my addiction actually physically gambling, but that wasn't just the time I lost. I lost time when I wasn't gambling at all. I lost time when I was away from gambling. I was on foreign holidays, losing time, missing experiences, seeing sights, going places, experiencing culture that I have significantly less recollection of because my mind was elsewhere. It was preoccupied. It was either preoccupied because I had a football bat down, waiting on scores to come in, or just because I was waiting for my next bet. 
I was thinking about gambling and I wasn't focusing, absorbing and enjoying the experiences that life has to offer. And I'm not talking about just necessarily positive, you know, <laughs> worthy cultural experiences of absorbing other you know, things and whatever you're on holiday. I'm talking about all the other things that you should be doing, even the mistakes you should be making, the stupid one night stands, the drunken nights out, the ridiculous shit that you get up to you know, when you're a younger lad. And I missed out, not entirely on all of that, but I missed out on a huge amount of that because of gambling. And, you know, maybe, in a way, my wife tells me that I, I'm not a, you know, a grown-up. I don't act in a, a grown-up way. And I, I think, although that's quite a male-dominated thing, I think also we have to understand that as gamblers, maybe we do forego life experiences. We do forego certain parts of our life, which we then retrospectively, you know, miss and feel like we missed out on and want to catch up on. And and it has, I would suggest, in some element, stunted my development, stunted my growth in that respect. Because, you know, I lost so much of my time to this horrible, horrible addiction. Um, I hope that that makes a lot of sense. Um, that was sort of triggered a little bit by, I was watching one of the podcasts from the Invisible Addiction channel. Um, hello, if you're watching. Um and uh, yeah, he was talking about lost time and stuff, and I thought, yeah, actually, that's a really good good point. That is, you know, by far and away the the biggest addiction. And as I get older, I realise that um, the money I lost, and I lost a lot of money, I can replace. I can work my ass off, and I am working my ass off to do that and to recover money. Pretty much the only breaks I have are sometime in the evenings and, and when I'm making these videos. The rest of the time I spend trying to make money, and it's I'm getting there. You know, I'm recovering the, the, the financial hole I dug for myself during those many years. But I cannot re-earn that time. I cannot revisit those experiences, revisit those times with friends and relationships gone by and say, look, I'm sorry, um, you know, I wasn't there. I'm sorry I was absent. Let's do that again. Let's let's try that again. I can't do that because it's, it's gone. So, uh, yeah, if you're younger than me, then... You know, do something now and don't miss those experiences I missed out. And if you're older than me, then don't miss out on the experiences you've got coming up. You know, life is a you know rich tapestry of experiences, and there's great things about being at every age. And there's ne it's it's never too late to give up gambling. Don't write off the rest of your life with it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay sane, take care, and I'll uh, I'll catch you on the next one. All the best.